Um, oh my god, did that start the show? Dude, I told you I was gonna count us in and then- I know, <laughs> but I, I was getting like these weird notifications on Discord I was trying to figure out. Oh god, I hope it didn't hear my small feminine burp that I that I did. I, I think it just heard, excuse me. <laughs> well, because I burped, I was gonna say excuse me, okay? That's just that's just who I am. Just Rodney polite. Dangerfield has had this joke that was like, you think you're classy? I'm not going to do a bad impression. I'll do a great impression. You <laughs> okay, think you're classy? It. No. Um, it's like, you think you're classy? Uh, uh, try passing gas alone and saying excuse me. That's classy. <laughs> and I felt a little self-conscious the first time I heard it because I will say excuse me if I burp or fart no matter what when I'm alone even. So... It's just a reflex, basically. No, I know. That's but such it's also a... a little bit of a compulsion. But I don't want to get into that right <laughs> okay. now. That's such a funny... That's such a funny, like, bit. I love that bit. I was actually... I was explaining, um... I was explaining the old, uh... The old comedy routine that I'm building up throughout the years. Um... To my one friend. Explaining, uh... The genius of the... The the bit in the routine um, i'm worried that when you use the, the the term old comedy that you think that your jokes are in the style of old comedy and that's what you're trying to market it as no and let me tell you that okay because that no. is a big that is a big uh insult to no. old comedy no i mean it in the sense that it's like you know the, it's the been old, in process yeah right? yeah the old oh. comedy bit yeah yeah Anyhow, um, I was talking to, I, I, I don't know where I was going with it, but, um, it's just, that, that, um, just reminded me that, that, that Roddy Dangerfield bit reminded me of, um, some of the genius pulled from, uh, from my, from my, uh, from my jokes and my, uh, my routine. So is that kombucha you're drinking now? Yeah. Why is it that color? <laughs> That is not uh, an appetizing color. For... It's mango. It's mango turmeric. And I love no mango turmeric. Jesus Christ! Just go jerk each other off. I love mango. He almost but... made me spit it all everywhere. Well, what are you gonna do, Rick? <laughs> that's such a that's such a like made. I mean, not that turmeric is made, made up. up. Like, it's a, no, no, no. But like, like uh, we, you know to sell it like we need to we need to add something to this you know like mango ooh, you know it needs to be a little more like pompous what, so what let's, goes let's with say, mango what goes with mango what goes no definitely not turmeric but it, doesn't well, it definitely matter. does because it tastes good yes but there's barely there's <laughs> there's hardly even there's like a sprinkle of turmeric in there i bet. you think so i don't know what turmeric actually tastes i'm not like, sure so but i, I know, know they only added it because they were yeah. like, well, for sure. We need to we need, it needs put to it be more than just. Something. Well, you know, it's funny. All these flavors aren't just one flavor. They're, it's always something combined with something else. Exactly. Pomegranate and oregano. Yep. That's a big seller. <laughs> oregano? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so bad. Actually, you probably wouldn't taste it because oregano. Well, no, oregano you can taste. You'll buy no, it. You, you'll buy it. You're I'm right. going to see you drinking it next episode. I do have a pomegranate, but it's not combined with... I don't know what it's combined with. I don't know. But, um... Napalm. You know napalm is a, just a combination of soap and blah, 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 blah. I don't know. What's the line? In, I just watched the movie and I already butchered the line. You know you can make napalm with... Da, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> My name's No, Brad I think Pitt, you nailed it. And I sell soap. <laughs> Watch this fight club once. <laughs> that's that's pretty funny. You know what I did want to bring up really quick? Um, before we get into the Well, first you know what? Welcome to the Film Juice show where we talk about um turmeric and mango and um also movies and shows sometimes. They clicked on it, they know the title of the show. That always gets me with some of the like, when I do the other podcast, yeah. two in Which the cooler, we, available I was gonna everywhere. Say, I was going to say, to <laughs> remain not be named. <laughs> um, 
you know, we have guests on and stuff, and there's always a there's oft oft times oft. a moment when Matthew is like um, my brother who I do the podcast with. Uh, you know, oh, I guess we should announce our guest, and I'm like, yeah, I suppose that's all right, but also like there's a there's a title on the episode, there's <laughs> intro, there's an episode description, like. Like people know who we're talking to, unless they can't read, and you they gotta, can hear them. But what if? What if? But, but there's an intro. There's an intro to the show, and the intro says their name. Yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. Because I was gonna say, like, what if the person like can't see? Then like they hear it. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Well then, yeah. That that makes sense. That makes sense. Um. But I don't. But that's just something that's always been done with shows, <laughs> like even like television shows. So it's like, welcome back to. You know, the Tonight Show or whatever, mm. you know, talk shows like that. Welcome yeah. back to Ellen. Don't look well, at me. You know. <sighs> with some of with some of those, I feel... Well, with some of them, I feel like it's like... Because with the idea of cable, you're just channel surfing, right? So sometimes you're not really looking at the title. You're just right. fucking flipping through. Um, so I feel like those instances where, like... Like, there are instances where they just get back from commercial and you just happen to be yeah. uh, catching it. For sure, for sure. <clears throat> and I'm not saying that, like, there is something to it, I think, maybe. Like, it's it's certainly very comfortable mm-hmm. to be like, here's the information. Here, here's our thing. Yeah. Repeated once Consume again for it. you. But, <laughs> but to do it in such a formal way... I don't think is necessary for podcasting necessarily. Okay. I think just in the intro, in the intro, you should say the name at least once, just, just in the fact, just in case, like in the intro. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I get it. Cause with this show, like the intro is kind of in the beginning of the episode. It's yeah, not like a there's, separate. Oh thing. yeah. We don't have a separate. I know. you. And yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. And in the intro to the other, I do say, you know, yeah. Well, thanks for listening to Two in the Cooler and all that stuff, and then the name. So it still is, but like, dirt, so, so you're a hypocrite because it's combined, I guess. No, I yeah, for I mean, uh, that's without a doubt, and you know, I'm sure you could name a lot of ways, okay. probably a ton, <laughs> but um, Same. but like to do it, but to do it in the episode, I mean, yeah. when you have an intro. Oh yeah, no, um, that's uh, that's redundant. Right? Yeah, of course. I agree. So, um, stop doing it. No, <laughs> um, it doesn't matter either way, but yeah, it is redundant for sure. It, 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 a lot of, we, we all just, I feel like a lot of life is just doing redundant things to get Probably. to the next I've thing. also never like expressed that out loud. So that's <laughs> also why I think it happens on the other show yeah. often sometimes. Cause I'm you. like, this bothers me, but I've never said <laughs> That it does or why. So when, that's when on some, me. I got you. Because it's it's so the second something starts bothering me, I don't go like, hey, it bothers me. I'm like, why is it bothering me? Yeah. It no. Goes I, you know what's funny? Out. I feel like this show has more and more become an outlet for things that have bothered you a- and me in a sense. And like, that's interesting. I, I like it a lot because it's great. It's great to talk about. <laughs> that's something. That's actually something I've been thinking about a lot lately. Is one of the reasons I get so excited to do this show is because I know that um, uh, I can really be myself with Joe here, I and agree. that like I can be as terrible as I am, and he will get that like part of me is is like joking and like. Well, just laugh at the awful things. You're that... the worst person I've ever... How dare you? How'd you yeah, say yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. No, fuck those people. Um, but, no, yeah, I, I, I feel the exact same way. It's great. Um, one of my favorite parts of the week, if not the best part of the week. Um, so, um, we got a great show today. Um, super excited to get into it. Oh, I am actually so excited to get into these movies, especially since one of them we haven't talked about at all. So that makes me really excited. Um, so that's going to be great. Um, we got not too much movie news, but before we get into movie news really quickly, I just wanted to say, um, super quickly. Um, I was just talking to Andrew before 
uh, we started about, uh, I just watched, um, I have a feeling we're not going to review this movie because we literally just talked about it before. And yeah. So, um, I just watched the movie fight club for the first time the, uh, like a week ago with my friend. Um, and <clears throat> I really liked it. It was really good. Um, I think it's definitely like a little overrated, but I think it's really great. I still think it's really great. I just think not overrated. I think it's overhyped. That's what I should say. I think like people talk it up a lot. Um, but it is really good. Um, anyhow, um, one thing I wanted to bring up that I, I didn't bring up when we were talking is it's so, I, I don't know if I ever talked to you about this, but have you ever seen the video, um, why all movies in 1999 are the same? No. Okay. It's such an interesting video and I highly recommend, um, I don't know if you like those kind of videos. I don't know if you care for video essays very much. Well, <clears throat> I will tell you a story about that after okay. we're talking about this. Okay, this. this one I think is really good. I, I know some of them can come off as really st annoying, but I actually really like this this video, and I also think the, the, the narrator and the guy who makes them is really good at making them. Um, but anyhow, um, basically, it's about, like, this, like, weird golden age era of, like, the 90s, like, you know, there was an ep economic boom and, like, you know, th this era pre-9-11, basically. And um, there were three movies that came out in 1999 specifically that are, like, basically the exact same premise, but told different ways. The Matrix, Fight Club, and Office Space. And he focuses on those three movies, but there and there are other movies, too, that came out that year. And it's just, it literally Not is... Not just three. Yeah, but it's just, like, this idea that these movies are all about, like, the mundane life of, like, you know, society at the time and, like, how kind of, like, it kind of reminds me of, like, Rebel Without a Cause in a way where it's, it's like, this telling, like, how, <clears throat> like, society, like, is yearning for that, like, kind of non-conformity um, and that, like, like anarchy or not anarchy always, but like, you know, that, that kind of like breaking away from that mundane, um, that, that's what it is like that escape from it. Um, I thought that's so interesting and it's like interesting because like, <clears throat> like, you know, it's before it's like pre nine eleven, and it's like, it's just in this weird time where it's like, it's like these movies would not have been like, it's just, it shows this very strange time. I think in America specifically, um, where things were kind of on the up and up again, but like, there always has to be like something to like, some sort of conflict, and the conflict of that time was kind of itself, which is kind of what Rebel Without a Cause is about. Um, yeah. So I thought no, that I was super a, interesting. Um, I really dug I think that. That's a good point, and it makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. in the late nineties, um there was also kind of this revitalization of the punk scene in yeah. America and punk started in the sixties coming out of the yeah. prosperity that followed the war. That's so that interesting. Sort of thing. So history repeats. It itself. all loops around. Yeah, too. you're right. It all, does. And one more thing I'll hundred, say, <laughs> hundred years, all new people doing the same things. Very true. One more thing I will say really quick. Um, but that makes, I was just also talking about how much I love the ending of Fight Club. It's like, it's growing on me so much. It's like one of my favorite endings. Like one of the most iconic endings I've ever seen that is stuck with me. Um, but I want to say um, the, I, in the context of that video, I also thought it was interesting to think about that. That would not, that ending would not, not have been shot like that. I guarantee that movie probably wouldn't have been made if it came... The, the interesting thing to me is I don't know if that movie would have even been made if it came out after 9-11. You know what I mean? Like, that's the interesting, yeah, nope. like... It's so interesting to me. Like, I don't know. That, like, frame, that lens is, like, super... That's crazy. It's just crazy. So, anyhow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it that... defines so many things when you actually start to sit down and think about it. I've been thinking yeah. about it a lot in the with the TV show Entourage lately. Oh. Because I've... <clears throat> I've recently started to rewatch the show Entourage for the third time. Yeah, you like that show. And I, the first time I saw it, 
was uh, my sophomore year of college, and then I watched it again my senior year. Mm. Excuse me. And, yeah, I really liked it. And then I started watching it again, and I was like, this show is terrible. Oh, really? Like, this is, well, it's not so much that it's bad. It's just like it's a show with absolutely zero stakes. And it, Oh, and I think, and looking back on it, which I think that show started, uh, uh, shit, I want to say like 2007. Yeah. But I feel like it's still a product of post 9-11 when, when folks kind of yeah. um, needed that, that sort of escape. And I think that had this pandemic not gone down, I would have still really liked Entourage, but because... We're now dealing with another year-long tragedy. What I'm feeling now is most similar to the period during World War II mm -hmm. when monster <clears throat> movies were very, very popular. That's what I find I'm sort of gravitating to now. Not monster movies in particular, but whatever the the current equivalent to that is. Yeah, you know? that's so interesting. Yeah, that's super interesting. That's cool. So maybe in a year or two, I'll watch Entourage again and be like, this show's incredible. Because so we'll be we'll be past a lot of things. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's kind of how things. Yeah, that's so cool. Anyhow, I love that. Love that. We get deep on this show, folks. Um. Okay. Now I ruined. Ankle it. So deep. Cool. <laughs> um. So. <clears throat> uh. That uh. That segment was brought to you by um. I don't know what I was going to say. Kombucha, I guess. Um, let's just... <laughs> I had something going there, and then I lost it. Uh -huh. so. I thought you were going to say 9-11. I was like, that's a no, weird no, move, Joe. No, that's a strange I... thing to say. <laughs> it's not gonna Probably say. not. Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> oh, no! Did you just spill your kombucha? No. Oh, no, you just unplugged your, your <laughs> yeah. thing. Because yeah. you are just so... Goofy, ah, take it, so take it wacky. Back with laughter. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Let's not be contained. Let's let's talk about some movie news. Um, what um, yeah, we don't have a lot this week, which I'm okay with, because sometimes I like to just focus more on the movies. Um, so what do we what do we got going on um, with the first bit of movie news? What should we, what do we got? <clears throat> um, what do we got? Well, we got three things. Yeah, um, let's go. Let's talk about the, the one thing. Let's talk about uh, uh, the Creed thing first. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. Kind of roll. Let's kind of roll through that. Yeah. So Creed three. There's gonna be a Creed three. Surprise, yes. surprise. Okay. I wonder if this franchise is going to spark as many sequels as the Rocky movies did. I hope not. I honestly wish there wasn't gonna be a third Creed two. I liked, but it definitely wasn't as good as the first one. So like. Oh, I don't know. Creed 2 was wait, awesome, Maybe though, I man. did think it was better. I actually can't remember. I haven't seen Creed 2. Because that's the one with, uh, yeah. with Dolph Lundgren and You're and right. I actually can't remember. Maybe I did like Creed 2 more. Creed 2 is awesome. Maybe I did. But, like, I can't remember you know, now. The, the third one, like a sequel is risky you know, in its own, but you mm -hmm. get to a third one, then people, I think, start to be like, oh boy, you're really just trying to stretch this out. And I think that probably <laughs> this movie... Um, the production of this movie is getting really pushed by the studio mm -hmm. and that's why i think this is the announcement here michael b jordan is going to be directing this movie His as debut. well as uh, starring in it as well and i think that 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 to me sounds like okay this is a big franchise we need michael back in it what's it going to take mm -hmm. to get him in michael b jordan let me direct it yeah okay. it it um it's being written by keenan kugler and uh, zach balin um, based on an outline by Ryan Coogler. So, that's interesting. Um, <clears throat> and it's going to debut uh, November 23rd, 2022. Um, so it's a, it's a ways away. Um, and, um, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. I am, this is the thing. I don't know if I ever said this outright on the show, but... I love a good trilogy. I a good trilogy is I'll take a good tri like I I love a good trilogy. Like if 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 I don't know, I just love that format. I think I think the the three like the three like like movie 
like sure. arc is awesome. Because movies themselves, three acts. Exactly. You know, so I, I I love that shit. Um, like Lord of the Rings, I think it is amazing. Yep. Um, Star Wars. Star Back Wars. To the future. Back to the Future. I still haven't seen this. Indiana movie. Jones. Yeah, Indiana Jones. So, um, but the Santa Claus. <laughs> All great trilogy. That's why National Treasure should have a third one, if I'm being honest. Um, but anyhow, um, the thing is, is trilogies are always, not always, um, but in some instances like this where there's not really written things to go off of, like, you know, books or anything. I feel like trilogies are a more of a risk for sure, um, unless you have like an outline for them ahead of time. Which I feel like most movies don't do nowadays, which means you don't really get good trilogies um, as much as often as, as anymore, which I don't like. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't get a good trilogy from just, you know, seeing like where it takes you. So as long as this movie is like framed as like the end of the tri the Creed trilogy, that's all I'll need to like be like okay. I think this is going to be a good movie. Yeah. I think if they do it with like how they do with Rocky, where it just keeps going and going and going, I don't want to see that. I don't but think if, that this is going to close off the trilogy. I would like, yeah, you know, it'll end, yeah. but I think it's definitely going to because also like, how do you? It's all about money. There's because there's not really an overarching story in this. Yeah, yeah. There's not really a definitive end, so I'm sure it'll end. That's what I'm hoping they somehow... me in a fine way, but just the nature of the movie lends itself to um, being open ended. Yeah, I hope they find a way to like give it like not maybe not a definitive end, but like a really really satisfying conclusion. And I'm sure where, they will. To but where I don't think that that's gonna mean that they're not gonna make more. Sure, I just want it to be satisfying enough. To where if they make another one, I can be like, well, it. I have my Creed trilogy. I don't have to. Gotcha. I don't have to worry about like like Indiana Jones, where Not Kingdom familiar. of the Crystal Skull came out, and it's like, okay, just I have my Indiana Jones trilogy. You know what I mean? Not so, familiar. Yeah. yeah. So, or or with Shrek, like take out the third Thank movie. You. <laughs> take out the third. Although, wait, was it the third movie that was bad? Yeah, was the, the third, third movie stinks. So that's the one with Justin Timberlake. That yeah. Bad. So you take the first two and the fourth one, and you just shove those together, and that's my sure. Shrek trilogy. Because I actually don't think the fourth one's that bad. Um, mm -mm. it's not great, but it's not that bad. Um, so yeah. Um, anyhow. Um, yeah. I I, I hope it's I hope it's good. It, we're not gonna get it for a long time. Um, but yeah, those movies were pretty cool. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, let's move on to the next one, I guess. Um, I guess, why don't we do the Space Jam, uh... Uh, yes. Space Jam 2, uh, Space Jam 2 New Images came out. Um, and they are, um, I think they look pretty cool. I... Yeah. I really like the, um... I really like the what's it called. Um, it seems like they're going... I, I mean, the main one that I've seen is the Bugs Bunny... Uh, the Bugs Bunny frame. I don't know if you saw that specific one. It's like his ears are up. Um, um, let me see if I can... Mm, uh, 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 Bugs Bunny... It'll probably come up if I look it up. It's actually not popping up. Why isn't it popping up? Well, well it was on Twitter. Oh, Google there it is. Bugs Bunny? No, there we go. No, no, no. I found it. I found it. This is this is the main image I saw. Here, I'll just post it to, so you can see it. I can't show okay. it to everyone. I believe I know what you're talking about. Um, ba -ba -ba -da -ba. But the thing about the, mm -hmm. the number one thing that leapt out to me with these images is that um, it seems to me that they're really pushing for uh, the the um, Asian markets, China and Japan. Especially there's that image of LeBron with the basketball. Yeah. And it's the blue basketball, and he's going like... And the basketball is like glowing blue, and it's got lightning. I yeah. mean, that's straight up 
Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, yeah, all that stuff. And I think just kind of the the very uh, high contrast, like CGI that seems to be in the background of all of these pictures. Mm-hmm. I think this movie, regardless of the the only thing that worries me about this mm-hmm. is that maybe they didn't focus on the writing as much because Mm -hmm. it didn't really matter. What mattered more than anything was the look to appeal to those markets overseas. Yeah. I will say I really like the look. Um, I really, it's cool. It looks really clean and it looks really fucking cool. And I also like, this hasn't been confirmed. Like none of this that I'm about to say has been confirmed, but the, it looks like they're going for this kind of new style that's emerging where they're mixing 2D and 3D. Um, or they're making 3D look... Like, there's, they're using 3D, but they're making it look 2D, kind of. Like, kind of how Spider-Verse was. Um, and then there's there's this other movie that came out recently that escapes my memory. Well, the, uh, for, the, space, the original Space Jam kind of did that. like those, Right? Like, those guys looked a little... The, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, yeah, for sure. The, this is just obviously like more, like, cause they didn't have, um, you know, they did some CG in that movie, but like this movie, like, they're gonna like really go into it. It seems. Um, I do. Um, I, I told this to my one friend. I really hope. Um, I don't think this is confirmed, but I really hope. Um, uh, Bill Murray makes an appearance in this movie. I don't think he Wouldn't will. That be something? I really, I that would be because he's like my favorite. He, I mean, this probably shouldn't be the case, but he's my favorite part of the first movie. Like he is the funniest. He's the funniest fucking person in that movie. It is so, so funny. Every t- every line he says is like amazing. Maybe like movie. trying to think of who would be the. Uh like new bill like equivalent to bill murray in this maybe like adam sandler that'd be funny too if they did like i could see adam sandler being funny in this movie so but we'll see um i mean yeah we'll see what happens there there hasn't been much other than that um like there was like you know there's been stuff about some of the other characters that have, that have come out that but it's not like that big of a deal um but um yeah so we'll see what happens um it seems seems cool i i think i think everything i've seen so far is like fine but i i agree with you i do worry about um yeah i hope the plot is still like strong um i don't know i i'm very curious how what i'm very curious of how this movie is gonna gonna be um yeah i'm very curious so we, we just gotta wait and see when do you know exactly what what's the date for this movie this movie comes out like soon right like in a month or two. i have no idea what? Oh, because it's going to be on HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I still have no idea. I'm going to check. But there's no way it's that close, right? It's one of the closer ones, for sure. Um, maybe it's in the summer. Ah, July. Okay. It's in the summer. Still pretty close. July. Yep. Um, cool shit. Um, yeah. So, we'll see how that goes. Um, and, yeah, we got um, we got one... One well, we got kind of two things combined, but one more big thing, um, and that is I feel like we have to report on it every week now. But um, that's the Snyder Cut um, from Justice League. We're getting news about it all the fucking time, and I feel like that is not a mistake or an accident. Um, so uh, you actually sent this to me. So what? Uh, yeah, what? What? What kind so... of what happened? So the latest HBO Max release is Tom and Jerry mm-hmm. from the uh, show Tom and Jerry. They got a new movie, and uh, somebody um, went to watch it with their kid, I think. Maybe they just wanted to watch it. But anyways, they were, they went to play Tom and Jerry, and the Snyder Cut started playing. Mm-hmm. This was last week. Obviously, that cut has not actually been released. So when he played Tom and Jerry, it's just started playing. He was able, this guy, to watch the first hour 
of the Snyder Cut before they like shut it down. And he could see like he'd like info it and said Tom and Jerry, but it was not Tom and Jerry playing. It was yeah. Um, so he watched the first hour, and he said that first hour was good. And then HBO Max, you know, they they kind of stuffed it. And, um, yeah. I think maybe this was. I mean, I don't really. But like, what if this was just a um a ploy to get people to try and click on Tom and Jerry because that movie looked really bad. Yeah. I, you know what I think that I, I don't know if it was a ploy for that, but I do think it, I don't think this was a mistake. I really, no, I, I hope it not. was because in, cause Zack Snyder did an interview the next day mm-hmm. and somebody kind of asked him about it and he seemed really just disappointed and sad that oh, somebody damn. got a little sneak peek. So that really sucks. So if somebody yeah. did do it on purpose, knock him I, out. I, I see to me, maybe and then maybe it's not on purpose, but to me it seemed like, what if this is just a way to get like, because all that shit came out about the Joker and people all of a sudden like, I feel like the hype also, I feel like the hype got a little bit m- murky again when more stuff about that came out, and um, I feel like they're just trying to keep reinvigorating the hype around it. So I'm like, well, what if this is like one of those leaks? Um, like, just to, like, get people, like, oh, this guy said it's the first hour is the best DC movie he's ever seen. Like, I don't know, that's, uh, it can make the hype, like, more again. This might just be me with my tinfoil hat, though. I did text you that. So, um, part of me is like, man, that could just be an intentional leak, um, just to get some hype moving. Um, or it could be, uh... Or it could be like a real thing, and that's the case. And if that is the case, well, then I'm excited. I mean, I'm gonna we're gonna watch it regardless. So we keep yeah. seeing this. We just gotta wait. <laughs> we just gotta wait. Um, that's all there is to it. Yeah. The only other thing I'll add, and this is old news, I guess, but new news to us. Um, this movie is going to be. I thought the trailers were just gonna be four by three, but no, the whole movie is going to be shown in the four by three aspect ratio, which is basically just the box. Um, so there are going to be bars on the side. Um, oh, man. I didn't realize that when you were saying that. Because that's what I kind of yeah. wanted you to touch on. Is like, what does that mean for when people are watching this on their TV? It means bars are going to be on the side. Um, yeah. And on the top? I don't know about on the top. I okay. No. I don't think on the top. I think just on the side. Because, because um, it's full frame. So usually... So... So the reasons Zack Snyder said the reason why he did it like that is because, and this is how he always originally wanted it to be is because he loves shooting on IMAX so much and like how big and the full frame he loves shooting on IMAX so much. I think he like just like shot in that same very similar frame for this movie. And, um, I can't remember exactly what it said. I mean, I, but it basically it was like since obviously you can't have the IMAX screen in your like in your living room like that's kind of how it like conforms it just you have the bars um with the 4 by 3 um but and it sounds weird but you do get more of the image even though you get the two bars on the side because with widescreen you it cuts off the top and the bottom with this, it doesn't cut anything off, but you get these, like, black borders. So it's like, I don't know, it's give and take. Um, yeah. So technically, we're seeing more of the film, but I, personally, I've never been a huge fan of 4x3. Um, I'm, I'm more of a widescreen person, because I, I, and maybe it's just because I'm used to it, but I just prefer that, like, that cinematic style. Um and like sure it cuts off some of it but usually like filmmakers film it like particularly where they know that part's going to get cut off so it's not like you should want to see it anyway but it seems like Zack Snyder did not do that so we're going to see it's going to be very interesting um i like that i like hearing that he specifically shot it to be um to be four by three. Cause that's, then he's not just like 
shoving it in there, like making the film black and white, which he is going to be doing. But it's not like he's just like, oh, I want the film to be four by three. It's like he shot it already, like in that way. So I, there isn't just going to be dead space there. Like there's going to be shit going on. So mm -hmm. I think that's good. So we'll see. We, we, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Should be the tagline for the movie. Honestly. Oh my God. Um, I hope, I hope the version they release isn't the one that's in. There's no, yeah, never mind. That's not a real thing. Never mind, never mind. They're gonna release a black okay. and white version, but I was like, I hope that's not the version that comes out first, because that would yeah, suck. No it's way. Not, no way. Um. So anyhow, um, that's and with that, that is all the movie news we got. So, without further ado, we got some movies to talk about, and I am excited. Um, I didn't even ask you beforehand, but I'm just going to ask you now, because who cares about format? Um, would you rather take the second movie or this movie to intro? We'll take this one. Okie dokie. Take it away. So, Raya and the Last Dragon just released on Disney Plus for the premiere. You can pay 30 bucks for it, mm -hmm. and you get to watch it. Uh, it's a new Disney animated movie. It's about... Um... Well, Joe's going to play the clip right now, so you'll see. Here we go. <laughs> I always forget Let's that. Let's catch you up. My name is Raya. Our lands have been at war for as long as we can remember. Our people never see eye to eye. My daughter, I believe our people can come together again, but someone has to take the first step. Now, in order to restore peace, we must find the last dragon. I wish to join this fellowship of butt kickery. Let's go. My name yeah, is Yeah, so Ryan. in this world, there, this country has kind of been split into different territories, each one named after different parts of the dragon. And the heart, where Rhea is from, uh, they house the dragon gem, which is this mystical object created by the last dragons. Um, and it supposedly protects the land. When that gem gets broken, cracked, and the pieces get sent to each of the different parts, Reyna has to first find the last dragon, because that's the only person that will be able to, you know, put it put the gem back together. Then get all the pieces of the gem so that these monstrous things that are turning people to stone will go away. Which is interesting. I didn't, uh, I don't know if they showed that in the trailer, but I didn't know that that was like going down. Mm -hmm. um, how to begin? I really like the concept for this movie. Yeah. I like movies where I, it, it just feels very like, you know, uh, with a color by numbers fantasy, but I like it. I like when there's like different regions and each one has a very distinct personality, you know, mm -hmm. and here's the snow one and the desert it's one. Sick. Like, I know it happens a lot of times, but like, who cares? I, I think who it's really cool. It and is. this one, you know, does, a, does a, a very fine job with it. Um, yeah. you know, make it, making it its own and stuff. And it's, and again, it's, it's got that other thing where like each, uh, location there's a new personality that we meet there that kind of joins up with our our main protagonist mm -hmm. um, so it's it's a lot of fun because you can kind of relax like you know the movie's going to take care of you maybe that's just a disney thing overall mm -hmm. but i think that this format mm -hmm. really works well for that um, yeah um and i don't think they really it, you know they did they did a good job with it like i said oh yeah this this movie blew. It doesn't do. Let me preface it with this: this movie doesn't do anything particularly new, but it blew me away, and that's the thing. That's the main thing that this movie like proved to me, and and it should have been proven to me earlier, but it, it, this movie proved it to me. Disney is just a master at this formula at this point. They. Almost every Disney movie, that every new dis animated Disney movie that we've gotten, follows this formula. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, I and not this specific formula, but like you know, there. 
they're they, like you said they're they're usually safer movies you don't like it's not like you don't really know what's going to happen or it's not like but it it's it's so most disney movies like this the bones are very similar to the other disney movies but what's built around the bones is always super different and unique and interesting and that's where the real that's where like the real meat of it is like that's where the enjoyment is it's like yeah the formula is the same and it's like very similar to the other like other disney movies but it doesn't matter because of how interesting everything around it is built like it's so like the way the story is told to you is so interesting also like the concept of this movie like you said is very very uh awesome it's just it's great it's so we haven't seen i don't think we've really seen a disney movie with this concept before yeah um, i don't know and it also keeps you invested because mm -hmm. you're changing uh settings so often it's so cool yes that's the other thing i want to wanted to point out um the pacing of this movie is, is I, i'll preface this the intro of this movie this is like honestly one of my only downsides of this movie the intro of this movie takes a second um the intro of this movie like it has some exposition narration going on it has some weird like back and forth um so the first like 20 minutes of the movie is like a little weird but and and it, it i wasn't like super invested at that point but right when it jumps into everything after that 20 minutes it's like boom, boom, boom. It's the pacing is like insane. It's like Mad Max level of pacing. Like you're just going. It is so, it is so like well paced after that that the beginning doesn't even like you don't even think about the weird pacing in the beginning because of how well paced it is for the rest of it. And like, also like you kind of forgive that as well because it is important information that you get in the beginning. I don't know if it could have been told in maybe a different way, but. It, it's just such a small part that it it doesn't really matter. Like, it, it, to me, it didn't really bother me. Like, it bothered me, but, like, I could forgive it because of how good the rest of, like, it just fucking took me away after that. Like, it's it's just, it's so good. After, it's great. Um, yeah. I don't know if you felt similar about the intro. I mean, uh, a little bit. Uh, more so, I felt just about kind of the exposition that's in this movie in general, because there is a fair amount of it, yeah. even for a kid's movie. And obviously, it's a pretty expansive world that we're getting mm -hmm. into here. So sure, you have to kind of, in a way, I guess, have some of that. Um, mm -hmm. What they do do, though, uh, which is uh, which is always at least in my a little better mm -hmm. in my mind is when they do the exposition, they shift animation styles. Yeah, I like that. Uh, make it that. a little more like a, a storybook looking yeah. in those moments. So that, yeah. that helps, I think. With, yeah. For, to, it, does, it's, it makes it less of like a, a shoving down your throat. Like it's like, okay, we know this is like a different thing, but like, you know, here it is. Yeah. And that's, yeah. There you go. Most Disney movies do that. Um, animate, most of the animated movies do that. Um, but I think it works yeah. well for them. I, they play to their strengths, especially in this movie. Like, th that's the thing. Like, Disney is on this hot streak right now with their animated movies. Um, they're on this hot streak. Um, and, I mean, I haven't seen... I I think the last movie that did come out by them, wasn't it Frozen 2? And I didn't see Frozen 2, actually. That's the only... I think it's the only Disney movie I haven't like Disney animated movie that I haven't seen in recent years um that came out um but I heard it was like I heard I heard it was fine um but this uh this movie like I guess what I'm trying to say is they're on a hot streak but also the animation in this movie is the best animation I've ever seen in any Disney movie like period it's insane it's they just keep getting better and better and goddamn like the water in this movie what the fuck what the yeah. fuck you know what um a couple things to say about the animation uh but to kind of to i guess keep with what you were saying a little bit more um 
what I found really interesting was that there were the moment in particular where Reyna is in the water at the beginning, not spoiling anything, but you know what I'm talking about during the opening still. Yeah. The camera movements were incredibly dynamic. And Mm -hmm. think about that for an animated movie because you are literally moving the whole frame and it has to be in unison so that it really looks. And I don't recall ever really seeing that before. I was like, oh shit. That's I, crazy. I made a specific note in my notes. The camera movements are the best in any Disney movie I've ever seen. A hundred percent. It's insane. That specifically the action scenes, amazingly action scenes are wild. They are so dynamic. Like they're so well shot, and it it's not like you. They actually let you see the movement that's happening. It's it's not like there are some with like quick cuts, but. Oh, they know how to shoot action. It really, you know what it, like, some of it reminded me of, like, motion capture, like, fighting. That's how good the fighting was. It, like, seemed, not, in in some instances, it definitely, like, it didn't make me feel like that. Because, you know, it is still, like, an animation, so they do some crazy shit. But, with specifically, like, the big fight, which is my favorite, that was my favorite fucking, that was one of the coolest scenes in the entire movie. Um, the, that fight, um, which I know, I think you, I'm not going to say, but you know what I'm talking about. It's just like, it was like, this seems like it was like motion captured from like a game of Thrones fight scene. Like it was such a great scene. There was so much drama in that scene. There was so many elements going into that scene. It was excellent. Mm -hmm. And Yes, the the fighting is awesome, and there is a lot of action in this movie. Yes, like a lot of action. Yeah, and the the character the character design of the people is great. Oh, yep. The design of the whatever they have, if it's the web, I mean weapons in particular, but mm. other props and stuff in there, the designs are awesome, and that's one of the things that that was what was so exciting to me going into the movie based mm-hmm. on the trailers was that the production design of certain elements like the props and also the creature design yeah. of all the the animals in the movie phenomenal really uh, really out of the box really cool yeah and they I, all you know it was sick yeah it was uh, it was fun i really love the the fa- like i really loved that they just they went really all in on the well maybe not yeah they went pretty all in on the fantasy like element of this movie like yeah. they they really did embrace it. Like, I mean, with the sword, with the, the cult, like, you know, the, the, the culture and the world building. I mean, yeah. I also, I mean, so what are the, what hmm. the things, what are they called? Droons? Droons. Yeah. Droons. Those were, those were, oh, those animated were sick. They, the animation for those were awesome. Like the glowing and like the, Uh, yeah, that's something I did not expect. Um, I think it worked very well because of how out of place they seem mm-hmm. in that world, you know? Yeah. Um, and they're freaky. Yeah. And. Yeah. It was. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that that, like, that those were going to be in there. So mm-hmm. it was a little unexpected. Um, but it what, was kind of cool. Well, yeah. What did you think of the um, music? What did you think of the music? Because I really liked it, but I, it's definitely, like, different from like like other um because like it's like they add in like it's like an old style like kind of music um but it also like has like you know new like beat elements into it so like right. i was just curious like if you caught that on to and me if you liked it because i feels, liked it yeah that to me feels very modern Mm-hmm. And I've, which is strange to say, because what I would consider kind of the, the, we're in an, a, a, a time now when in these movies, the music really is, the modern music really is a combination of the sort of uh, where music is at technically now mm-hmm. and, uh, yes, the kind of tones of, of, of the past, I guess, yeah. to put it in a weird sounding way. Um, and that's great for a kids movie, I guess, in particular, because it, you know, could get get you excited, um, but it also feels 
it meshes well with the the story you know with yeah. the, what's happening the plot and all that the setting everything yeah i i um i really liked it i i also just like i liked the um i really liked the culture that like was like this movie was based around and like i feel like i i and i don't know off the top of my head so i'm not even gonna try to like name uh but i i feel like this is like based off of like some it, it felt to me like it was based off of some sort of like actual legend that like um uh-huh. maybe not but it, to me it's it it, it seems like it, it was i'd say it probably like, is definitely not but yeah okay. i but that the yes the structure i mean it's kind of what we've mm-hmm. been saying the whole time like it yeah it just works very well and so uh, yeah i, I like that in that way and yeah I liked that they, like, yeah, I just really dug it. Um, I thought it was cool. I also thought it was cool, like, I don't know. It's, like, Disney, throughout the years, Disney has gotten, like, a lot better about, like, I know this isn't, like, a, like you know, it's not, it shouldn't, like, it's not the end of the world or anything, but I think it's cool that over the years we have seen Disney, like, get better about, like, making their movies more, like, interesting and diverse and like this movie definitely like like i mean it's it's great um so i really liked that and um also i i guess we should talk about um because we haven't even mentioned it the voice acting in this movie i think is incredible um kelly marine tran Ke- kelly marie tran plays raya um yeah and she she kills she's it. rose um, from star wars which yes, i had no is. idea that that's who was uh playing raya yeah so and um, she does an odd. She really does do an awesome job in this movie. Yeah, she does. So that's great. Um, and then yeah. Aqua. Oh, well, didn't never mind. Sorry. Aquafina uh, plays Sisu, which is the dragon. I thought she did a great job too. Um, I really like. They re- really did a good job of. Br- I I was worried like Sisu was gonna be an annoying character, but they I thought they made her like really really endearing and really well, like. Yeah, she was. Great. That's the thing is that these characters across the board are so well written mm-hmm. because there was time spent. Uh, again, that thing we were talking about. I don't think we talked. We were talking about this earlier. I don't think we actually talked about it during the show, but we have talked about it on mm-hmm. the show before, just not this episode. Yeah, is that all these characters that we're seeing have a past and they yep. have their own history they've experienced things before just what we're seeing right now yeah and that adds a depth to the characters that um is it just makes the whole experience so much better yeah it does and i want these s- characters are really well written they're really it, they really like and i want to say like that being said i'll say i'll just say it one more time this movie doesn't do anything like like, like you, you're probably gonna see like most of the things in this movie coming. Um, in some instances, I was actually like I was surprised in some instances. Um, but for the most part, like, like, like it, it is a very like similar formula that you've seen before. Um, but just with a completely different like shape and lens, which I think is great. Um, but I do wanna. I don't know if that's the best way to put it, but I do want to say um that every time i don't think that takes away from the movie i guess is what i'm trying to say but i also want to say um every time i watch one of these movies especially like disney animated movies i always like prepare myself basically to like Mm -hmm. get emotional like every time like i'm like it's probably gonna happen so i gotta just i have to just be aware that that's gonna be a thing and then, like, um, cause Co- was Coco Disney or Pixar? Coco was Pixar. 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 Okay. Um, but like, so it, I mean, it's a similar thing with Pixar movies too. Uh, oh, the last Disney movie we did, um, and that was very emotional. Was Onward. So, so like, so like, we get to this movie, and I'm like, just I'm like, okay, like, I I'm I'm ready for it, like. Let, let's just see what happens. And then, you know, this movie is, I will say for a Disney movie, the, the beats of this movie show up in different areas. Like, like 
I don't know. Like, I... Maybe I'm explaining this wrong. The message of this movie is a lot like... I feel like it doesn't focus as much on the sad as it does on, like, what they're building towards. Yeah, the hopeful. Yeah. And and that's... that. I'm not saying, like, Disney movies aren't hopeful, but, like, I feel like they're... They focus more... Like, there's, like... There's, like, a moment in every Disney movie sometimes where it's sure. just, like... Here's what I think makes that difference is mm-hmm. with all these Disney movies, basically, um, we are seeing this adventure go start to finish. Mm-hmm. And that's certainly true in this movie. However, like, there's... We know at the end of this because at the end it's sort of about uh, you know i don't know if this is a spoiler or not maybe skip ahead 15 but the all the world pieces you know the lands coming together yeah so we know that there's still like a lot more of the story and a lot more work mm-hmm. to do we're only seeing the beginning of this new era spurred on by this yes this this uh, fully developed uh contained adventure that we just mm-hmm. watched um but it's not a conclusion and it ends okay another spoiler if you mm-hmm. haven't skipped that far enough maybe the lights but that without getting into specifics so maybe skip hang on it ends with reunions yep. not with goodbyes yep and i was literally like this is the thing i was literally like the whole time i was like because there is something that happens and I was like, oh, was that supposed to be, like, the super sad part? Because, like, that was, that was, it was, it was sad, but I was, like, I wasn't, like, losing it. I was like, oh, wow, yeah. I think, did I make it through? Am I going to be okay? <laughs> and then the fucking last scene in the movie happens, and I was like, I was like, is it raining? What the fuck? God damn it. How did this happen again? Like, it wasn't, because it wasn't sad. It wasn't. It wasn't sad, yeah. and I was expecting it to be sad. It was a beaut- It was very. It beautiful was just beautiful. It, it yeah. was just fucking beautiful, and I'm like, God damn it, Disney! God damn it! How dare you make me feel things? It's they're not trying, fair. See, that's how they it's, get you. They're they're like, Ooh, you think we're going this way, yeah. and then they zag, and they're like, We and got then, a whole other way to make you cry, Joe. Literally, I didn't even realize it was happening until it was happening, and I was like. What, like it was so it was like surreal almost because I usually I can feel it coming on and it literally just I was like what the fuck is like what like this is like so heartwarming and beautiful and I fucking can't believe they did it to me again it, it was great it was great and it's just it's such a good and beautiful message and I gotta say this and it's not a message you haven't seen before but this is going to sound stupid, but I think it is. I think it is a timely message in a way. And I do think that most, I hope that most people will at some point watch this movie because I think everyone can learn uh, something yeah. from this movie. We got to, we got to reintact the dragon gem of America, man. <laughs> Not even just that. It's just like, it's just, it's, it's cool. I like that this movie talked about perspective. I like that this movie talked about, like, it, it really talked about perspective in a really good way that I thought was very, like, very, very cool of it. It was just, it was great. Um, and it didn't, it, it was, it got dark. It got hard. Like, the, there, I will say at a point in the end of this movie when shit's going down, I honestly was... There's a decision that's made that I thought was very, it was dark, but it was very, it was, it was very good. It was, it was cool. I really liked it. I really liked this movie. Um, and, uh, I, there was only a very, there was like literally like one thing that like, I didn't like, you know, the the beginning, like I thought was a little slow, but I feel like if I rewatched it now, I wouldn't even care. Um, and yeah, I really love this movie. So, and I think everyone should see it if they can. If they can see it, I think you should see it. Um, yeah, if you. It, and it'll be free on Disney Plus in, in like, June. June. June second, yeah. I think. Um, yeah, dude, it was like I think you said it perfectly. It's just it is a beautiful movie, and like the end of it, 
hits you. It hits you. It's good. It's real good. It, it feels good. It's a very feel good. Like it's it's yeah. just great. So anyhow, um, watch 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 this movie. Um, what are you gonna rate this one, Andrew? Tough to say, mm -hmm. uh, but I think I'll probably give it. I feel like it deserves something pretty high. Mm hmm. So. I'd definitely give it a 9 out of 10 juice boxes for sure. I'm giving it the same score. And this is the thing. Not getting... If, if the... If... if In this movie, could, I could see this movie getting to a 9.5. I wouldn't... I wouldn't... Like, if I... Like, over time, I could see, like, me liking it even more. So I could even give it a 9.5. But for now, I'm going to keep it at a 9. But... No matter what, what keeps it from a 10 for me... Is I don't know whether... This is the thing about Disney movies. As much as I really like them, I don't know. The only Disney movies I've ever really rewatched, animated wise, are the older ones and like the two D like classic ones. And I got so I don't know whether I'm gonna rewatch this movie, and I don't know what the rewatchability of this movie is. Mm. And so that that's why tentatively, I don't think it's a ten. But I do think it could, I think I could be wrong on that. And also, this is, before we move on, I do want to say a very interesting thing that, well, something that I found very, that I find, an, a thought that I find very interesting is this idea that I love that this movie is going to be, you know, we grew up with a very different age of Disney movies, right? So those are obviously the classic for classics for us, and those are the classics for our parents because you know it those were that was also when they were growing up but now you know there's generations growing up with these new 3d animated movies is their like and i'm sure they also watch the older ones but because their parents probably have them want like show them show them to them but like these new ones it's just interesting to me because i wonder if these movies are like gonna like be like that same kind of feeling for them as the old Disney movies are for us. You know what I mean? Where it's like yeah, they I grow up and I think there's just no avoiding that. I think no matter what I think what that's the movies awesome. are like, it's just it's more about what uh, age you are when you watch them and mm -hmm. less about the content. Not I that the content's true. not insanely important. Yeah. But especially when you have a group of them that are dealing with things that are, uh, you know, I'll say probably at least more outrightly. So a uh, higher concept than some of the movies that we grew up with. Mm -hmm. um, that's just, what's going to happen. I think it's, I think it's cool. I think it's great. And I, so I hope this movie becomes a classic for people. I really do. And maybe it'll become a classic for like me. Like I, I not, it's, I can't, I'm not going to say it right now, but like, this is this has potential. It has a lot of potential. Um, so yeah, the visuals were just great as well. Like I said, it just it's great. It's great. So watch it if you can watch it. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, that that's Raya and the Last Dragon. Um, let's move on to now. We got um, the throwback of the week this week. Um, this is. Um, this is an interesting one. Uh, so, we actually did a watch party for this movie, uh, Ghost Rider. Um, we did a watch party for this movie a week... Uh, when we're filming this, about a week ago. Um, and um, it was really fun. And uh, we're going to have more of those in the future. So, definitely check those out when they you know start getting announced. Um, so, yeah. But... Um, yeah, this is one of the watch party ones, and uh, so we talk. If you want to see some thoughts and commentary on the movie, uh, you can watch that right now on our YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, so now we're gonna review that movie, um, Nicolas Cage, two thousand sevens, Ghost Rider. Yeah. <laughs>
So, yeah, Ghost Rider. Um, so that is, um, that's, we, we talk about this on the show, but I think that's both of, that's Andrew's and I's uh, favorite scene um, in that movie. At least visually, it looks just incredible. Um, so let's, um, <laughs> let's get into this movie. Um, it's st- basically, it follows... It follows Johnny the, Blaze. the character Johnny Blaze, and um, he's a motorcycle uh, rider. Uh, he's a stuntman. He's a stuntman, and he sells his soul to the devil to save his father's life. Um, and, you know, it kind of doesn't really work out for him because it's the devil, and the devil, you know, never, you know, he plays tricks, and he doesn't really always give you the full truth. Um and basically the devil makes Johnny Blaze his bounty hunter um the the ghost rider and um he's basically supposed to do the devil's uh bidding and that's that's kind of a very loose um he's su- he has for to, so there's this bad guy uh-huh that they tell you through a terrible <laughs> scene mm-hmm. like he the fella just comes right out and said that this devil whose name is actually uh meth i've got a red meth mephistopheles mephistopheles his son is the main antagonist um blackheart played by wes bentley um and he is like after this scroll that controls these this town of like damned souls that's like this abandoned town and if you have this scroll you get all the power of like these dead souls because yeah. i guess that's how bad people get their power is directed what what electricity is to us yeah. damned souls is to to these guys so he yep. wants he wants all that um and okay first of all the yeah. dialogue in this movie is really, really bad. Oh, but oh, I'll start bad. with a little backstory on this. Just yeah. to set the, set the scene. Set so, the scene. Spider-Man, Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man with mm-hmm. Tobey Toby Maguire, still one of the best uh, superhero origin movies of, of all, all time, time. without yep. a doubt. Still holds up. Yep. That came out. Blew the, I mean, took everybody by storm crazy. Is that 2000? So, that, so that, I think that came out in 2000. Uh, two actually. So then, in the year two thousand, you have the first X Men movie, which is you know very good. And then you have Spider Man. Things just go crazy. Oh, you checking out the? I'm just curious so, the date. Yeah. Yeah, it was two thousand two. That's crazy. Because, so then you have, uh, these superhero. This very specific type of superhero movie. That is X Men, Spider Man, and the Fantastic Four. X Men mm. and Fantastic Four owned by Fox, Spider Man owned by Sony. And it's a very, it's, they're so different from the superhero movies that we have now. It's this very specific mm-hmm. kind of superhero <clears throat> movie that feels a little bit, I guess, based more in realism. There's certainly more of, a, of an emphasis on, action and less on character and story uh, just a little bit because there's still some some character things that spider-man and x-men do super super well i guess also because there's a lot more development in those characters mm-hmm. um but this one i think this is like i wish i had written it down when we watched it but i can't remember this one i'm sure we can look it up but Where this is this Ghost Rider, the Ghost Rider property was not owned by Fox or Sony. This is like Columbia mm. or something. Oh, yeah. Like throwing well, their hat in the ring, which I thought was really interesting. Daredevil also came out in 2003. I wanted to throw that out there, the Ben Affleck. Uh, yes, movie. right, which is definitely closer to <clears throat> this movie than yes. any of those other ones that I named. Yes. Let's see. I wonder if Daredevil's d- by Columbia, too. That actually would make a lot of sense. I'm on the IMDb, but I don't know if it'll show. Yeah, I have that. no idea. It does. I I can't say for sure that it is Columbia. Mm-hmm. But also, Columbia 
is a Sony company. So I must be thinking like Paramount, I think. Yeah, again, yeah, I don't yeah. know. But again, I can't confirm. But I know that it's like it's a different studio than these other superhero movies. So So that's kind of where we're at in this. And this movie is definitely just a you can tell it's just kind of a grab to try and get some of that cash because it was oh, Columbia Pictures. Got? Okay. It says is production Columbia... companies, Columbia Pictures. That's what it says. And Columbia is owned by Sony. At least now they are. Isn't that right? Because um... Columbia is the woman with the torch, right? Yes. It says Columbia okay, Pictures, yeah. Marvel Entertainment, Crystal Sky Pictures, and Relativity Media. And okay. distributed by Sony Pictures Releasing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So it is. So it is Sony. So that's interesting. So yeah. Well, which also kind of makes the more makes a lot of sense because they're the studio that had Spider-Man. They're the studio that really blew up the the superhero market that made a ton of money off of Spider-Man. So of course they wanted to continue to try and get that that sort of cash flow in. And you can yeah. tell because this movie is such a cash grab that it's. Yeah. Like it's so it sucks because this character is so freaking cool. I know and this movie, this movie gives zero effort, <laughs> and it's embarrassing. Frankly, it's really, it sucks. Yeah. The big thing, and I don't that we I was what kind of brings that idea to the forefront in my mind that we said during the watch party is that just look at how this movie is structured. It's so shitty. It is, mm -hmm. um, you know exactly what it's going to be when you go into it. It's like, it's a group of four bad guys, each of them with a different elemental power. And there's one guy that's like the main bad guy. And then, you know, the movie is just going to be ghost rider versus one guy. He beats that guy, okay, and then he's up against this guy now, and he beats that guy, yeah. and then it's this guy's turn, okay, he beats him, and now there's yeah. like the the big boss level. It's like, it's like an old video game, but, what but sucks all, is... somehow with less story. And yeah, I think I know what you're gonna say. But... They don't even actually fight. Like it's barely. It's like literally like the the basic. It, I don't even know if it actually counts as the basic definition of a fight. Because, like, the other guy never does anything. The other... Like, if anything, Ghost Rider's just murdering them. Like, they don't even try to, like, fight back. Like, it's the and weirdest... It's typically, you would think that, okay, even if they are doing that sort of mm -hmm. deal, going through these guys one at a time, at least the fights are going to ramp up a little bit. Mm -hmm. If anything, it's the opposite. Yeah. They go downhill. Because the first guy he fights is, like, the, gra the earth ground <laughs> guy. And he beats that guy pretty quickly, and that's yeah. because that's kind of the first time we're seeing Ghost Rider fully use his his powers mm -hmm. um, and and go up against an enemy. And then he goes up again. There's like this wind character. Yeah. And you're like okay, at least this is going to be a little more that one dynamic. Ramped up at least a there's going to be a little more meat yeah. here. But there, were, but uh, <laughs> it was so bad. And then. He goes up against this water guy. And that was the worst. And that's like yeah. right before the climb. This is we're, yeah. at the fucking, we're in the third act. Dude. It's shoved the in. End of the fucking movie. It's literally and he shoved. Takes in. this guy down in <laughs> like one minute, maybe maybe thirty. One seconds. minute, maybe ninety seconds. This whole thing lasts. <laughs> it is garbage. Oh my God. Um, it's so bad. <laughs> but let's talk about the two cool things that happened in this movie. Yeah, one of them well, I already maybe showed. Three. Yeah, what you'd say, yeah, you should talk about that, I think, because what you said when we were muted, I think, was a really good point. It's the best part of the movie. It's easily the best. It, it like, hypes you up to watch it. Like, it, it actually makes you, like, it's the... Nicolas Cage actually, like, acts his ass off in that scene. He acts his ass off in this whole movie, I should say. And Nicolas Cage always acts as much as he can. Like, I feel like he just does that. That's him. Like, yeah. I feel like in every movie he's in, he does that. That's not, like... Um, he's just that kind of actor. Um, which is why I think a lot of people love him. Um, but this scene, like, it just... It works so well for him. And if you just showed me this scene without the rest of the movie, I'd be like, man, that movie looks actually, like, really cool. Like, that looks fucking awesome. It does. It looks great. Like, 
sure, he's screaming and it's over the top and he's like going like, rah, rah. And it's like he's breaking the fourth wall basically at some parts. But, because like, I think there his, is a part. His, his skin is burning off and Nick yeah. Cage, you know, that's what he's thinking about in that moment. And he, yeah, he really goes for it. Man. And he goes insane. He literally like loses his mind. It's just great. It's so cool. And like it's insane, but it's it's yeah, like you said, yeah. it's phenomenal acting in that moment. Yeah, and like it's so sick. Um, and that's the best part of the movie. I mean, that's really it. I everything else kind of is a low note compared to that. Like nothing. I as and this might suck to say, but it's true. I don't think there's anything else that lives up to that scene in this movie. Nope. I don't not think even anything close. else. Oh well, you know what? Actually. The um, the first time he does the the soul stare, the penance, the stare. penance stare, that, that is really that's cool. a good scene. I don't think that beat. I still don't think that beats that scene, but it's close. That's the closest you get. Um, that I guess that whole sequence where he first gets his powers, that whole sequence is really well done. So you got like a a ten minute scene there. Watch it and then. That's all you gotta watch. <laughs> that's the. That's basically all you gotta watch of the yeah. movie. Um, um, let's see. So I know you'll have a lot to say about this, but the Sam Elliott character, and you have to have that type of character in the movie. You know, well, you don't have to, but it's it's yeah. not a bad thing to because he could kind of like walk the protagonist through this, and that's mm -hmm. how we kind of learn what's going on as the protagonist is. But um, this is again zero effort, the most bare bones that you could possibly have to put a character like this in a movie at all. And then what ends up happening is, I mean, a, it's confusing because it's so stupid and it's upsetting. Mm -hmm. And it's also almost like it a punch in the you face off, a so, Yeah, bit. you you forgot like what happened and I knew what happened. And you were yeah. so mad. What <laughs> It's like the biggest waste of time ever. Huge waste it's, of time. It's only in there. Pathetic. It was pathetic. It's fuck, yeah. It's fuck literally that. only in there just for like promotional value. Like, cause they showed it in the trailers. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. It's like literally only in there for that reason to Garbage. hype people up. <clears throat> it's crazy. It's insane. Um, yeah. Basically, Sam Elliott's character goes. I got one last ride in. Cause he was he was a ghost rider before. <laughs> yeah. He's the first, or, well, he's one of the, he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, maybe not the first, but yeah, he's the Hard one before him. Um, but, anyhow, he goes, got one less ride in me. He goes, let's ride. It goes, -na 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 -na. and the music's bad. It's terrible. No, it's... the music isn't that bad. Oh, my. God. It's a cool song. <laughs> what is it again? I can't remember what it's called. It's like is the it... Ghost Rider. It's a Ghost it's Rider like, song. -na 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 -na. Yeah. Ghost Rider. Uh, yeah, that's a cool song. <laughs> so... So anyhow, um, it's going, and they're they're literally going through the desert. And Sam Elliott's character looks so fucking cool. Like, they did a great job with his design and his horse. Like, it looks great. And then yeah. they get they literally get to the like to the where like, the bad guy is where the bad to the, guy to is to this town. Yeah, and he goes he goes. Well, it's time for me to go. <laughs> And then rides he, off and dies. Yes, and he fades, he pulls, and he fades away. He pulls so a Luke like, Skywalker. He it's just so goes dumb, away. Because it's like, you ha I got one last ride in me. Oh, you meant that literally. You didn't yeah. mean like a ride as in like a full <laughs> transformation and, and, and fight, like a full uh, one last use of your powers. He had, really, he had, at their fullest. You literally meant just one last time that you could travel from one destination to another. He had a little bit of gas left in the tank. He just, he just had a little bit of gas. In the most literal sense. Yeah. Like, that's it. So fucking funny. Oh, it's terrible. Um, it's so bad. You can tell it's just shoot a horned in there just for, like, fan service. Um, but Some, it's the I worst it's it the worst kind of fan service because it's not satisfying. It's just, like, it's bad. Right. It's really bad. Um... But the thing about Sam Elliott, I just, I also just want to tack this on. Um, I said this during the watch party, but that man doesn't age. Um, he's been like, no, he ages, but he's been like 70 for like 20 years. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll say like 60. He's been like 60 for like 20 years. Like, 
I, I yeah. think that's like a really like because this movie came out in 2007 and he looks the exact same as he does in A Star is Born. Like it's fucking yeah. it's kind of funny. Um, he's a great actor. I and it doesn't like that. I guess that doesn't really have anything to do with the movie. I just thought it was really funny. That, yeah, because like, this movie does not really give many no. opportunities for people to act because again the dialogue is so bad and yeah. nowhere is that more prevalent than with uh eva I oh eva mendez right eva yeah. mendez's character so bad which was a big gripe we had when we were watching it it's my, it was my I least mean, favorite they, part they i can't stress this enough the dialogue is really so bad um that there's not a lot to work with for anybody they give her breadcrumbs. If they give everybody else, like, maybe a dry piece of bread, they give her yeah. crumbs. It's really shitty. It's really shitty, because, like, that's how... I mean, that's... I'm not... And, like, I, I'm glad it's it's gotten better since, but, like, thankfully. But that's how, like, a lot of, like, female, like, um, in bad movies like this, that's how a lot of, like, like female protagonists yeah. were treated and like yeah. that is just the fucking worst like and i think that's really the main point though is like i think that still happens if the movie is terrible yeah oh yeah well that usually makes it that's usually like one of the things that'll make it like a bad movie like you can tell yeah. like so yeah this movie does that and it's just really it's really hard to watch sometimes like she's literally only there she, her only purpose as a character is to fulfill and is to be the love interest for Johnny Blaze. And that just sucks. That's just so yeah, shitty. It it's... And like, it's not even like, it's not developed at all. She literally like gets stood up by this guy like three times and then still just shows up randomly at his place. Like just to like start like, yeah, nothing about the, just the fact that they're both, interested in each other so much mm -hmm. going both ways is uh so um uh, so not believable no it's not movie. it's really bad um the even with the yeah. whole backstory with the opening and the the, the backstory is funny as even fuck that. the backstory is so funny though like the intro i love how bad the, the intro is like the intro is funny i think the intro is like very like silly I mean, it's not supposed to be, but it's very silly. Like when when he's in the rain and she's waiting for him, and he just looks at her and just keeps going. <laughs> yeah, why would you even drive by that tree? It's so funny. It is the funniest. Oh my god, I. <laughs> it's At that so point, bad. I'm almost like, did he not see me? Or, uh, am I supposed to catch up? Or what if he just did it to be like a dick? Like he was just I like mean, that's what it seems to be. That seems to be. That, I mean, he just he's like just like he just drives by. He literally stops, looks at her, like like he like hates her, and then just keeps driving. It's so good. It's so over. Johnny so Blaze. Bad. Oh my god, Johnny Blaze. I will um, say yeah, at the end here that I that I did like how like the like finishing move i guess like how the bad guy was defeated but yeah it, it was still so anticlimactic yeah that yeah. It, uh that it kind of it still kind of sucked yeah i gotta say um the yeah the finishing move was cool but honestly what i liked more than that well, like i'm glad how that like worked it like that kind of worked into yeah yeah, yeah. I, what i kind of liked too though is the which i wish they showed more of his powers but the one power they show at the end very briefly is when he changes the gun that, that was, was sick it's pretty sick it's like a terminator 2 like moment that's again it's, that's one of like the it's just pretty sick. pretty cool parts maybe it's just like it just like forms it's like, oh yeah. it was cool um yeah that was that was a cool scene um Oh my god, one of my favorite all-time lines is when, um, what's that guy's name? Um, Blackheart, when yeah. he, which sounds like, like a bad name for a pirate, um, was when, um, Blackheart goes, I'm not going anywhere, I like it here! And he, like, 
Oh my god, it's like one of the worst lines in the entire movie. It's so bad. Like, his delivery. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. The most annoying fucking thing in this movie is what they do with the audio with his voice. It's fucking double right. layered. And it's the most annoying, like, voice. It's terrible. It's so bad. It's almost like they try to do that in place of that character actually having a personality. Yeah. You know? Yep. And, like, the... I mean, also, the CG is not good in a lot of parts. We didn't mention that, but it isn't. Um, they de- Some parts it's good, but some parts it is not good. Um, most parts it is not good. Um, and then um, there was one more thing. There was one more thing with... Um, uh, oh, with Mes- Mef- Mephistopheles. Um, yeah, that guy was not good. Um, oh, the acting? Yeah. That was like... That was like yeah, that was Peter Fonda, who's like a legitimate actor, yeah. and he was so <laughs> fucking bad. He was really bad. And then and the, did, I don't know. I like it was so bad that I don't even know if you can really make any good excuses for it. Maybe like maybe he just wasn't interested or whatever. Yeah, like even even if he was, even if the dialogue, which it obviously was terrible, mm-hmm. like even all that stuff, I don't know if that's any excuse for just how bad that whole performance actually was yeah well the thing is is like yeah i there is one cool scene with him but it's not even because of him it's just because of the effect the shadow scene on the wall that's like so that awesome scene. i and like that scene yeah that's a cool scene like very cool. they set up his character really cool and then he doesn't do anything and then he's like a worthless child like he literally <laughs> can't do anything like he's He's terror. It's just like, why are you even there? Oh, the jail scene. The jail scene was kind of cool. Um, I can't be in here. You please. You don't want to. Oh my God. It reminded me of the dark night when the yep. guy was like, I, my insides hurt. And it's yep. literally the dark. Oh my God. That's so funny. Oh, Christopher Nolan was calling out. He was making yep. a call back this to his favorite to movie. His favorite movie, Ghost Rider. It all worked. <laughs> it all makes sense now. Um, imagine. That'd be so funny. This was like one of his favorite movies. Um, but um, you just don't see the genius of Ghost Rider. Um, it's just... It's too, uh... He does that whole, like, blackboard thing. Yeah. Momentum. The thing about Ghost Rider yeah. is it shackles. I, I don't even know what Christopher Nolan actually sounds like. I cannot imagine that voice in my head. But I don't think it's chubby Michael Caine. Imagine if he did that with Ghost Rider. I'd pay money to see that. Like, I, you know what I'd pay money to see? Not him, like, actually believe that, but... To see him, like, try to, like, make some bullshit yeah. up. Like, that would be fucking funny. Um, holy shit. Okay, well, um, let's rate this. Let's rate this movie. I actually don't e- You know, I've had a week to think about it, and I actually have no idea. Up to now, I have no idea what yeah. I'm going to rate this movie. Because I... This is, like, one of those movies that, like... It deserves a rating, but, like, it's, like... If you hear us talk about this movie, you shouldn't watch it. You should watch maybe a few scenes in it. And honestly, if you want, I think it was a, like, it was fun to watch like together. It was fun to shoot the shit with it, but this is definitely riding the lines of like, of like, is it like good, bad, or is it just bad? It rides that line. It, I think it's definitely more bad than it is good. Um, for sure. So I, and honestly, I remember it being like way funnier than it is. And when um, this movie came out, I remember being on the school bus mm-hmm. and being like, that was the best movie I've ever seen. I agree. I thought it was when the I was, thing. you know, yep. uh, nine or 10. It aged terribly. It aged really, really bad. bad. I, I thought really it was bad. at least going to be like enjoyable, but no, it's, it's really bad. It's like, it's barely enjoyable. That's what I'm saying. Like watch some of the cool scenes from it online. They're all online. Just like because it'll make you want a re- like an actually good Ghost Rider movie, which yeah. would be awesome. But if you watch this whole movie, um, I mean, I we did just. <laughs> <laughs> I would not. I we mean, definitely, definitely watch it with a friend. It, I, yeah. If I would not, I don't, don't think I could. I don't think I could make it through this movie alone. Now I don't think so. It, that's just and not you enjoyable. Have the DVD. I do. I do. It's. I think it's back. I put it back there. Um, but um. 
Yeah, um, so that being said, since I can't really recommend this movie, um, it might seem harsh, but I can't recommend the movie, so I'm gonna give it a... Yeah, I'm gonna give it a four... Oh, I'm gonna give it a... F you know what? I'm just gonna stick to my guns. I'm gonna give it a four. I'm gonna give it a four. I'm not gonna give it a four and a half. I'm giving it a four. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I, a four I'm, is a good score. Yeah, I'm gonna give it four and a half juice up juice boxes mm -hmm. because of exactly what you touched on there. This movie rides the line in a very interesting way, mm -hmm. and ultimately, I have no idea what to make of it. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely like I don't think it's like bad enough to put in the threes, but it's I think it I think a four like I was thinking about it as a four and a half. But it's not that close to a five. So that's why I'm giving it a four. So I think four is like... But yeah, four and a half is as high as I would go. I think that's that's fair. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's Ghost Rider for you, everyone. Um, what a what a wild movie. Um, you know what this makes me not want to do? It makes me not... And I'm not willing this into existence. Maybe I am willing this into existence by saying this. But um, not watching the 2003 Daredevil movie. Um, this this movie makes me think like, oh, even though that's a different production company, that's through um Fox. Um, oh wow. Yeah, I looked it up. That's through um 20th Century. I'm pretty sure. Let me make sure. Just double check that that's what that said. It's not through Paramount or uh, whatever one I said earlier for this one. It is. Columbia. Yeah, it is. It is. Production companies are Regency Enterprises, Marvel Enterprises, New Regency, Horseshoe Bay Productions, and Twenty. And it's distributed by Twentieth Century. Yes, Fox. yes. So, um, yeah, um, very, very interesting stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see. Um, we'll see what the next watch party movie we do. Um, I don't. We have, we haven't talked about it since but um we we definitely have options and we have ideas um i mean yeah so it could be the one that didn't get picked um mm -hmm. or it could be it'll probably be that or it could be like we'll do another like we'll save that for another time and we'll maybe do another like poll so <laughs> stay tuned that being said stay tuned on our social media um we are on instagram at film underscore juice we are also on Twitter at Film Juice Pod. Um, check those out for sure. Um, we, yeah, I mean, the Instagram is active and like there's great uh, graphics that you'll be able to see and more highlights coming on there. Um, so definitely watch out for that. Um, they'll also be on the Twitter, um, but I think the Instagram is just the the way to go. It's it's if you had to choose one, it's really cool stuff. Um, but don't and, choose one. You don't don't have choose, choose one. one. Do both. Luckily, we live in a world, yeah, where you don't yeah. have to choose just one. Exactly. Um, and, yeah, and obviously, if you're listening to this on Spotify or whatever you're listening to it on, we also have a YouTube channel, Film Juice Podcast. Actually, I think it's just Film Juice. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's where you'll see um, whenever we schedule live uh, watch party streams, it'll be – it'll show it scheduled. It'll premiere, like, at the same time when it's scheduled. So that's a pretty cool feature that YouTube has that I really like. Um, and, um, yeah, you can watch the Watch Party stuff there and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think that's all there is to it uh, for this week's episode of Film Juice. I am trying to think if there's anything else to announce, but I think that's it. I mean, as always, there is more to come. Um, so stay tuned. Um, and, yeah. Thanks. It was a really, this is a really fucking fun one. Thanks for, yeah. thanks for uh, sticking with us this far. And I'm Joe Dorado. I'm Andrew Canada, and we'll see you next time at the movies. Mm -hmm.